stalking you. Um, not really, but I've got turned on to you about two months ago, and I think I've watched almost all of your videos. Yeah, well, that's right. Um, but I think I have a different perspective. Well, let me start with your question or why I'm mad. I'm mad because nobody told me what you're telling me. Um, okay. How old are you? 30 years ago. I'm 40. Okay. And um, X. okay. Hmm? Generation X. Go ahead. Yes. And um, unlike a lot of women who've called in, I was raised in a two family home. Um, my father uh, is <laughs> your Kappa brother and is 88 years old. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> 88? He's, oh, Jesus. He's signed but, the generation. Yes. And, um, you know, both my parents are professors and they told me to just, you know, my dad, keep your eye on the prize. Well, yeah. You'll meet somebody along the way. You'll meet somebody. Well, why, do you th why, do you th why do you think he did that? I think because he wanted me like, like you said, like so many of these other women to never rely on a man and to be, because he felt like women who rely on men put themselves in situations to be abused or are is he still um, your father see what i find with when, when when you have that big a gap between parents yeah i find that fathers want to give their daughters advice because they don't feel like they're going to live to see most of their daughters lives they're worried about your survival not your happiness mm -hmm. so that's definitely where he is now but i don't know if he was like that when i was you know an undergrad for example but, so but there's a he's 88 and you're 40 yes so he was four he was almost 50 when you were born Lord exactly mm -hmm. it's a different mm -hmm. calculus i mean um but he told you to keep your head down go to school and you'll find love yeah you'll find someone who's like-minded he was always afraid i'd fall for a thug you know i was into the bad boys in but, high school. Si but silent generation that's kind of, that's how it happened it happened in that generation. Yeah. It, you I know, agree. Right. It did. So they, they were born. He was born in what, 32? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm good with math. So he was born in 32. So, yeah. Keep your head down. And if you go. Right, because that's how he met my mother. They're both professors. Um, you know, she was. She works for sure mm -hmm. um, and was like the leader of our household, of our child rearing, I would say. Uh -huh. He was the financial leader. But how many um, siblings do you have? The Southern Belle from Arkansas. So I feel like I have my femininity. How many siblings um, do you have? Two, two brothers. Okay. One uh, older, one younger. Mm -hmm. Did your mother pledge a sorority? Yes, she's a Delta, as am I, and both of my brothers are Catholics. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, now it makes sense. <laughs> Give me a second. Yes, we have several oh PhDs in our family. Several. <laughs> it's the unholy alliance, Kappa <laughs> and Delta. <laughs> that either goes exceptionally well or exceptionally wild. <laughs> There's too much I red agree. in one house. Um, <laughs> whoo! All right, so. Your, your your brother's a leg. You're a legacy. Your, your mom was a Delta. You're a Delta. Yes. Your father's a noob. Your brother's a noob. Are your yep. brothers married? Um, one is going through a separation, and okay. the other is not married. No. Okay. So what do you? Okay. So you were lied to at forty. I was uh, lying to you know we very young. We now were all lied to. Saying, we were all lied to. Why aren't you married? Now he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> who's saying, who's who's asking that question? My dad. <laughs> well, because he okay, he's asking that question because he's coming from a silent generation calculus. He doesn't understand that even though he's seen it, he doesn't have experience with it makes no sense to them why we you're not married because it's supposed to be simple what do you what state do you live in oh that 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 is definitely there we go come on come on come on come on connecticut oh damn um uh how long you been there uh like 15 years well, well, uh, huh well i was trying to leave and then i did the thing i got into a phd program <laughs> stayed even longer I'm a PhD. now Call him Dr. White. See? See? I know. <laughs> PhD. Right. Connecticut. Where's the dog? 
I, I was very tempted to get one, oh, <laughs> especially since COVID. <laughs> right. So I you're in Connecticut no out kidding. there. You're in Connecticut in the suburbs with your PhD and everybody else is living that life. So um, why not move well, to Honestly, a lot of my sorors, they're my friends and they're single too. And a lot of them are older than I am and most of them are single. And I was right, I got, I got about Okay, but, but so let me help you out now. Mm-hmm. And this is about blood sport. If you got to kneecap one of these sorors to get to a man, you don't need to do that. I'm sorry, well, ladies. Make no, huh? Interested. There is one Kappa who's interested. I don't. I mean, what I'm but saying is, so what I'm saying is, so many of you ladies try to do this instead of getting your ass in the life raft yourself. You try to make sure you can all get to the raft, and y'all can't all fit in. You're in Connecticut, at 40 years old in the pandemic. Uh, New York City is. One state, New York or Manhattan is one state. Yeah, it's only an hour, hour. Okay, but do, where do you work? Do you work remotely? Right like now, about, yes. Okay, so carry your ass into Manhattan and work remotely. And be around all the single people. Just get up and move. Okay. Or die alone. I'm very frank. I mean, I'm I'm talking about moving either to New York or maybe LA. Yes. See, this is what I need our black women to understand. You guys are very good about going after your PhDs and your careers and everything else. And then you expect men to disappear out of nowhere. You're in do you want a black man? Only. Well, who the French toast lives in Connecticut? <laughs> Even people in Vermont are like, what? Well, New you better Hayes, carry your ass to Brooklyn or Harlem or something. You better go on back. That's, okay. You're right. No, you're right. All the all the high value your, here are married. Well, I know who exactly they are. Exactly, because that's where, where you go to marry. That's where you go after you get married. If I yeah. moved up there, I would have my family in Connecticut. Well, maybe not. I'm a city guy. <laughs> but the point is, you have your sorrows, and y'all all have the same thing. How many of your sororities? How many of them are single? Are you talking about one, two, three, four, five? How many of them? Oh, I have like my whole clique. It's like single women, and I've been hanging out. Give me a number. Uh, let's say six. Okay, six. If I threw one man in front of you, one's gonna get the one will get him. The other five are bridesmaids. Go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean. Well, what you what you gonna be, what you gonna do? I'm okay, gonna go. Front- oh, I'm definitely gonna go. Okay, you gonna break somebody's jaw? Well, they're yeah. older and they they okay, have. They then have then you gonna break a hip? It might be easier. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're but, giving up. They're like they're. How much old are we talking? They're in their fifties, a lot of them, and they're convinced that you know they don't want to be married. I don't right. believe it. Right, right. Because um, they're miserable and like right. right. You know, about- there's a couple that are actually. Like maybe one or two of them that I think are actually happy single, but the others I do think they wish they. So uh, are they? Are they uh, fit? No. There you go. So it's not as though they've given up. They have no real options because if they were still fit from forty to fifty, put a man that's a high value man in front of all of you. And I guarantee you, their tunes would change. But when you cannot get him, it's easier to say, I don't want him. Because you feel the fitness criteria. This is why I don't understand with so many women today. Men want fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive. And if you feel the fitness component, the whole notion of high value goes out the window for the most part. And I don't understand why so many women today cannot stay fit when you're single with no kids. Makes no sense. But you in particular, you got a choice to make. Your family gave you the best information they could, but you're 40 years old. 
You've been on your own. You've been you've been responsible for you for the last 22 years. When was your last serious or long term relationship? Like 10 years ago was the last shit. serious one. Yeah, I was engaged. Okay, but 10 years ago, did they discover fire? Did, did y'all have fire back then, or did they just now discover it? <laughs> 10 years? Come on, ma. I mean, serious. I, I'm, be, I, I'm being serious, but it's been 10 but, years. Yeah, a serious relationship. I was in a three-year situationship that I knew wasn't going anywhere. So what? I didn't there, hold on. Yeah. But you knew it wasn't going it? Hmm. All right. No, Bad decision. And see, women get upset with me when I say that whole die alone thing is because so many of our women just date unintentionally so now with all this experience i'm a lover talking. kevin you are like so practical and You're i'm not what? learning i'm a lover you know i how's that working out for you <laughs> You're right. your father made a practical decision in your mother yes he did he did it's not being a lover see we we romanticize these things I don't care about love at 40. You need to get respect and somebody who's going to give you your insulin shot. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> I mean, love went away three years after the pro, after the, after you crossed line. That was over for tw at 25. Love was kind of 25, 27. That's seriously at 40, all the mistakes, everything. Uh, okay. You have 40. You still have half of a life left. What you going to do? That's why I'm calling you because I, I and I'm listening. I got the move to New York, you know, memo. I'm I'm want to know what can I do at this point. Well, this is a, this is a t this is a, this is a show. A detailed plan is gonna cost you a consult. I'm okay. giving you an idea of what you should do. One, you need to prioritize. What kind of man do you want? What, what do those kind of men want from a woman? And are you willing to do what you need to do to give it? But not right now, you are geographically undesirable to all to the kind of men you say you want. So it doesn't matter. If you're not prepared to put yourself in the proximity game, what's the point? So let me get this right. Even if I dropped Boaz in front of you, mm -hmm. uh, you're in Connecticut. He's in Jersey. That's a long distance relationship, no matter how you slice it. Who's moving to who? I'm willing to move for love, but it does seem. I don't care of... about a seat. No. Take love out of your vocabulary. Okay. I'll keep it there. Okay. Then die alone. I'm dead ass serious. If, why do we feel like we get love? Why is that so important? Love. Isn't that what this is all for? No. What is it for? Isn't dying, not dying alone is so that you have someone who loves you when you love are dying? No. Love comes after. Do you think people loved each other back in the, when they married? <laughs> when they're arranged marriages? You learn to love somebody. And I'm, I'm, I'm extending this because I need people to understand how deep this goes. Talking to a college educated woman with a PhD and all this other stuff. And you're still talking this Harlem Quinn romance, Disney stuff that does not work in your own life. And you are refusing to get rid of it. But I've had love, Kevin. Okay, well. But I hear you. No, it's you not don't. The first time I've heard that. I mean, no, you don't. You, I mean, here's the thing. I, I, this is why I get real practical. You want love? <laughs> oh well, you really want to do this? We can do it. Do you really want to do this, or do you just kind of want to do this? Go for it. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want children? I do. How many? I'll settle for one at this point. 
right. I'm 40. Right. Um, what percentage of the financial load would, for the family would you like to have to be responsible for? 40%. All right. 40%. Mm -hmm. So when you had, so do you want a boy or a girl? Boy. You want All right. So when little, so when little key light is born, I don't know. So I see this <laughs> So when little key is born and you've been waiting for him for 40 years and you have, ba you get, have birth pregnant, you give birth. 12 weeks after you give birth, you're going to turn him over to a nanny and go back to work and let somebody else and pay somebody else thousands of dollars to raise little key. I believe it can be done. Uh -uh. Nope. I'm saying that's what, <laughs> that's what we're doing. I mean, cause that's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> I'm asking. That's what we're doing. How much new? How much is new child care? I don't even know. Five hundred bucks on the on the low end a week. Two grand a month. So you turn them over to Becca or even Keisha. I'm and you just gonna, trying to lower go my standards, Kevin. Uh -huh. Of course, I be. I would love to have a wealthy man. Of course, where I didn't have to work, but, but not, I understand. But I, I'm forty. Just, I'm, I'm not but, but, in my but, best shape. You know, exactly. I've got exactly. So got you're talking about. So you're talking that. about. So <laughs> you don't get to talk about love when you got all those things going on. Too many struggles. Too many. Because you're still wanting to date like a 20-year-old at 40 with all those struggles. But I'd be okay with like a man making like 80K. I think I make enough to, you know, cover the difference for one child. Lord have mercy. That's that's what I was thinking, you know, after listening to all of your um shows. Yeah, what, like, percentage, what percentage of black men what percentage of black men earn more than uh, seventy-five thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars in this country? What percentage? Mm. Come on, PhD. What percentage? Mm, I'm a PhD. Fifteen. One five. Well, one five or one three. 13 or 15 percent and you're in Connecticut you still want a man in the top 13 to 15 percent of all men at 40 years old with all the things you said and that you'd be happy with it ma'am you'd be blessed that's winning the lotto the powerball this is why I asked is a B enough ma'am you should be happy if you get yeah. a man who no, you you lucky if you get a man making. Mm, you'd be fortunate to find a man who's making median income. Okay. Or because the kind of man you're saying, ma'am, does exist. I'm not saying he doesn't exist, but does he want a forty year old woman who's everything that you just said? But I'm feminine, it? and I'm yeah. okay. How tall are you? I've got some things going for me. How tall me. are you? Five eight. How tall are you? Five, Five eight. eight. Dress size. Twelve. Don't do it, Kevin. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm just being honest. At five eight, you're feminine, but no, you're a brat. You're soft spoken, but you're a brat. It comes across as feminine, but it's kind of passive aggressive. Hmm. I can accept that. <laughs> so, at 5'8", 40 years old, yes, men who are earning that kind of money. But when he's looking across the spans and he's making a black man making 80,000 is making twice what the average black man makes. He's got options. 
And the real hard question comes down to, he's got options among black women and all women because he's more economically attractive. Why does he want a 40 year old woman, period? Especially if he wants more than one child. You can't do that. One is at best. So yes, you ladies need to really substantially lower your expectations to reality to meet your to meet your reality. That's what I, I thought I was doing. No. You're, You're expect- saying not 80, 50. Ma'am, it's a man marrying a man marrying you, right? Can get one child at best. That is just a step above the woman who was on before you. The woman in Canada. Yeah, yeah. But I think... Listen, and that woman was 36 years old, 5 foot 4, 130 some odd pounds. You saw the pictures. And I'm saying, she, and I said the same thing to her. A man is going to want for the risk that comes along with marriage in the West to get at least his own seed into the next generation. At 40, ma'am, you're five years into geriatric pregnancy. Are you doing, have you done any fertility tests or anything like that? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I'm in really great shape, but my gynecologist doesn't recommend it after 42. Exactly. Exactly. So one child at best, ma'am, you cannot be playing this money game. Does he have a Honestly, I'm not it's not about the money, Kevin. I, I was think I was hoping you would kind of understand given um my background. I just don't know how much in common I will have with a man who was making 50k. I need an intellectual man. I'm raised by professors. You know, I need to be able to have a, a intellectual <laughs> Oh my god. Man, I, mean, I just don't think we'll click. Otherwise, it's or, not you know, that. Okay, I laugh because I'm trying to be polite. You don't have that kind of leverage to be walking. You are acting, walking like you are showing up prize to this man because your daddy and your mom are educated, and you're Delta, and your mama's a Delta, your father's a Kappa, and your brother's a Kappa. He ain't marrying none of that. He's marrying your forty year old self. <laughs> This is why I said, you ladies really, really believe you are such so much. Mm-mm. You you overrank and overestimate yourself, and that's why I said this PhD shit goes to y'all's head. I just don't know what kind of stuff I'd have in common with him. In other words, I will be settling for a man at median income. I got news for you. You just insulted over half of the black men in this country. No, I yes, it's not you did, that. ma'am. Listen, that's not what I meant. But that's what you that's did. Not what I meant. But that's what you did. I know it's not what you meant, but that's what you did when you I'm said, so "I don't know." When you said, "I," when you listen, don't over talk me. When you said that, I was hoping that I would understand where you're coming from. Looking at your background, I understand. That you waited too long to play that card. I don't okay. care what your background is. I care that you're 40 and your your doctor does not recommend you having a child past 42. I care that you live in Connecticut and you're geographically undesirable for many black men. I care that you're five foot eight and a dress size 12. And I care that you want a man making around $80,000. And what is he going to get from you? What are you bringing to the table? as far as wife skills. I'm supportive. I'm kind. I can cook. I mean, a recipe book, a whole recipe book. No, but okay. Um, what can you cook? Um, tonight I made this Parmesan encrusted chicken and some spinach and some au gratin potatoes. Okay. What else can you cook? Um, steak, um, spaghetti, <laughs> I mean, uh, fried chicken, if that's what he wants. I can cook pretty, pretty much anything. What about healthy? 
I mean, I cook mostly healthy for myself, believe it or not. I understand. But I think... Ma'am, ma'am, what I'm trying to get to understand is what are you bringing to this table as far as domestic skills? Oh, okay. I cook, I clean, I and I'm were great you, with kids. Okay, were you actually raised to be a wife? Be honest. No, but I was okay, raised by okay, a Southern so, Belle. So... Still I, need I need you to stop. I need you to stop. I need you to stop. Okay. I'm doing this is why it doesn't work. You cannot put your what your mama did to get her her husband on the table for your man. It doesn't translate. Your mama mm -hmm. was the Southern Belle. That's why she has a husband. And my dad was still the cook, by the way. I said your mama was a Southern Belle. That's why yeah. she has a hmm. See. Generation X women fell into the borrowing from other generations. You borrow the struggle of Rosetta. You borrow the struggles of the slaves. But you don't. But you had none of the characteristics of the previous generations. So when I ask you, what are you bringing? You bring a modern woman with a PhD who wants an intellectual. Fine. You should have married him in your twenties. You don't. You don't. Men who are that era. How? Okay, eighty thousand dollars. Let's just take it. Eighty thousand dollars. How old is the oldest man you've ever dated? Age differential between you and him. Oh, you don't want to know. Yeah, I do. Hey, <laughs> I, I dated a sixty-year-old. This last guy I dated. Mm, yeah, but that was okay. Yeah. How old? What's the oldest man you would marry? Um, probably fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. What is the average lifespan of a black man in this country? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I don't know. What is it? Sixty-nine, seventy. Uh, some some stats say 68, some say 72. Okay. So 58. So if let's just take 72. That means if he lived to 72 and you had a child, if you got pregnant on your wedding night, your, your husband be dead when the child's 14. I did think about that. I'm saying yeah. that's the oldest. But I, I, I think older, younger. My, my point is, ma'am, you are coming at this as if you have leverage. You're coming at this as though you have time that you don't have, sexual market value leverage that you don't have, ge geographical proximity to these kind of men that you don't have, and time that you don't have. To where you actually can inject it into a conversation with a straight face that, hey, I don't know what I would have in common with a man who's earning the median income. As implication, these men cannot be uh, learn it on their own. Just because you go to college doesn't Kevin, mean... Kevin, that's not true. Please, that's not what I meant. I really no. want to retract that. That's not what I meant, Kevin. I, my ex-fiance is a blue-collar worker and was brilliant. He's a, but he had a lot of side hustles too, and so yeah, like he was. Then why did you say it? Be, I said it because you asked me what I would want, like in a perfect world, yes. But what I would settle for, or oh, let me not use settle, but what I would, you know, that doesn't really matter as long as he can have an intellectual conversation. We can enjoy similar things. We can talk about politics and, you know. I got, I got yeah. other news for you, ma'am. Why do you, uh, I want a partner. Yeah, you're not, oh, Jesus, say fucking Christ. You're not a partner, you're a help me. And that's exactly what I was going to say. You ladies have fallen into this partnership feminist stuff. Men don't want to sit around and talk politics with you. They want you to go in and, and anyway. This is why this whole die alone thing is so sad because so many of our women bought wholly into the notion of modern woman and feminism. And you really want a partner and your mother was a Southern belle. You didn't learn. 
You didn't learn. You but look, she works. I don't care. And you're about to be, and this is what I mean. Here comes this brat in her. Notice every time I say something she doesn't like, she starts whining. <laughs> you're a brat. <laughs> and no one, in order to be a brat, you got to be fucking hot. I'm just being straight up. You got to be hot to be a brat. And no one wants a 40 year old brat. I'm going to be honest, ma'am. That's sobering. You're hanging around with a bunch of women who've given up. Right. And I don't want to, I don't, I recognize I don't want to do that. I recognize that. Well, then you need a reality check, ma'am. Because maybe you've overestimated your value judging by your company. But you need to move to a city where you actually understand what it means to compete for a man. And you don't have a lot of time. What month was your birthday? August. So you just turned 40. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's uh, February. Nine months. You got 21 months before you're out of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. 21. Oh, so yeah, even if it I takes six months, even if it takes six months, that means you got 15 months. Mm-hmm. I'm on the dating apps, Kevin. I'm trying. All righty then. The whining's not going to work with me. I don't care about the dating apps. I'm just told you what it is, man. I'm giving you the best I can, but the the world does not owe you understanding. And once the dating apps and all this other stuff doesn't work and you sitting in Connecticut looking for waiting for love when uh, when you turn 42. There are no excuses. That's why I said dying alone. One in three, one in four women will marry three or four will die alone. It's a choice. And now you guys are seeing what I mean. These choices are micro choices all along the way to live in delusion, to live in fantasy, to live in numerate, to live. I don't care to live. Well, I can find it. I can have it all. It's not as though it's not tragic. It's chosen. Before 1965, black folks are married at an 80 percent rate. Women, black women are choosing not to marry. This is a perfect call of the illustration of that. PhD and all. So watching all the videos and everything else, ma'am, you're going to have to start moving with a sense of urgency and a sense of intention if you hope to have a different outcome. And if not, well, what I'm going to say is if and when, let's say this doesn't work out, don't be bitter at men. Don't be angry at men. Oh, you, I won't. You've had, I, I you've had more it. opportunities. Oh. You've had a lifetime of opportunities with men. Mm-hmm. That's more than that's more than some folks get. So, all right, I'm going to get on to the next call. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm.